In this video I'm going to show you the basics of the HTML5 canvas tag. We'll learn how to do some simple drawing as well as some simple animation. So I'm going to create a folder called canvas and I'll make a index HTML file inside. I'll start off with a basic HTML document and first I'll create my canvas tag. I'm going to give it an ID of paper width of 500 and a height of 500. Now anything that I put inside of line 13 is going to show up if the browser doesn't support canvas. So I can say go get Chrome and you could put an image there, you can provide a link to another browser um, etc. Now you'll notice that nothing really changes over here. There is a block element now that would push stuff around, but that's about it. Um, in order to do anything inside of the canvas, we need to use JavaScript. So inside of my script tag, I'm going to create a window on load function. Now that basically means that, whoops, little typo, that anything in between these two curly brackets will run when the entire page has loaded, including uh, images and things like that. I'm going to give this a title of Canvas Demo. So there are a few things we need to set up before we can actually draw to the canvas. The first is we need to get a reference to the canvas. So I say document get element by ID paper. Then I'm going to get a reference to something called the context. I'm just going to call that C and set it equal to canvas get context 2D. So we're um, getting a, a place that we can draw in, in 2D inside the canvas and it's called C. Now I can say C dot fill style equals black and I'll say C fill rect zero zero canvas width canvas height. And we can see that a 500 by 500 uh, pixel canvas is now filled with black. So fill style is sort of like choosing your paint bucket tool color and uh, fill rect takes in four arguments. Um, the first two are x and y locations for where to start filling the rectangle and the, the or where to position the rectangle rather and then you have width and height arguments. So we can knowing this uh, do something else see fill rect 20 oops 20, 20, width and height is 50, 50, and let's give it a fill style of red. And there we go. There's also, if you want to put a stroke, we can say stroke style white and we can say stroke rect and that's really you probably can't even see that in this video it's very very small one pixel uh, stroke so I'll say C dot line width equals 10 and now I've got my stroke on my rectangle next we're gonna draw a few lines so I'm going to say C dot stroke style equals let's choose a hex color shrink the line width a little bit now in order to draw a line you need to begin a path so you say C 
begin path, and I'll say C move to 100, 100, C line to 200, 200, C stroke. And here's my line. Now move to is like picking up a pen and dropping it down at a given location on the canvas. Um, so we, we drop it at 100, 100, which is right here. Um, and then we draw a line to 200, 200, which is right here. We could change the line, make it 150, 200, and it moves back a little bit. Um, then to actually see what, uh, to actually render the line, you need to call the stroke function. Um, now the line can be continued with another line too. like so. And if I wanted to close this path, I can simply say C close path. And it will connect the last point to the first point of the path. And since it's closed now, I can fill it. And if I call the stroke function after the fill function, you can see that the stroke function sort of goes over top of the, the shape. And if I reverse it, the stroke appears smaller because the fill is going over top of the stroke. Now I can uh, write text by saying c dot font equals let's do 20 pixel Helvetica fill text hello There we go, we have some text that says hello, let's make it a little bit bigger. And we can change the fill color. Pretty straightforward. You've got the text that you want to write and X and Y locations for it. So if I wanted to move it to the right a little bit, I change the X argument to 300. Next I'll show you how to draw a circle. It would be nice if you could just say c.circle x y radius, but that's not how it works. It's a little more complicated than that. You say c begin path, c arc, and we'll go to say 200, 300 and we'll give it a radius of 50. And these arguments coming up are a little confusing. There's my circle. I'm going to move it down a little bit. Now, um, x, y, and radius of the circle are all easy to understand. Then you have sort of starting point and ending point along the circumference of the circle. So if I can change this and you see that a part of the circle gets cut away. Um, so I've changed the starting point to this point which is 2. And you might be wondering why is it 2? Well it's not in degrees. These arguments aren't in degrees so you wouldn't say like start at 90 and end at 180. Instead you would say um, start at math pi divided by 2, which is 90, and end at 180, which is math pi, like so. Um, pretty confusing. You can, If you don't know anything about radians, um, you might want to look it up on Wikipedia or uh, Math World or something like that. 
Then the last part is the direction if we go uh, around the circumference. So I can say, if I say false, it looks like this. And if I say true, it gets reversed. So it's controlling if you go clockwise or counterclockwise from this point to this point. So for, this is for drawing arcs, really. So in conjunction with the move to, you get a, a nice arc shape. Here we'll get a half circle. We'll go to, say, two radians. Go to one radian. And you could make a pie chart like that relatively easily. Now, just to do a circle, uh, we go from 0 all the way to uh, 2 pi, which is how many radians there are on the circumference of a circle. Now, if you are drawing a lot of circles, you will be writing math pi times 2 all the time, so usually I put that into a variable called 2 pi. It's really a thunderstorming outside. <laughs> so next is animation. Um, there's a lot more stuff you can do. You can draw Bezier curves and you can alter pixels one pixel at a time. Um, but th this is enough to get us going. Now if we want to animate some of these, uh, we're going to need a set interval. And this will run this anonymous function every 30 milliseconds, which is about 30 frames per second. Um, and uh, let's say I, if I want to uh, animate over black, I can copy this. And I'm going to continuously paint every 30 milliseconds. I'll continuously paint the canvas black. Now, um, if I want to animate a circle, moving maybe from left to right, I can take my circle code I'm going to need to reset my fill style and there it is, it's not animating but it's being drawn and painted again and again and again and again over top of the black background. Um, to animate I'm going to need a variable, I'll call this pose x I'll set it equal to zero, and I'll, in the x position argument of the arc function, I'll insert pose x. Now, at the bottom, or at the top rather, I'll say pose x plus equals one. And it animates across the screen. Um, now, if I weren't continuously filling the canvas with black, everything that we drew initially would remain and this circle sort of just paints across the canvas. Um, this turns out to be pretty interesting for creating a trail effect. So I can use a CSS3 uh, color definition instead of this uh, CSS black uh, color by saying RGBA I'll do for the red, green, and blue channels, I'll insert zero, so it's black. But for the alpha channel, I'll um, insert like 10%. So what happened was the initial drawing fades out, and this circle comes in, and it has this little trail. Now I can increase that trail by changing the alpha to an even lower number, or an even lower number. But the background really takes a long time to fade out, and the circle has a really long trail on it. It may actually never entirely fade out. There we go. Um, I can add a Y position. 
let's start the Y position at, say, 200. Now I'll insert it into the uh, arc function call. So here we are at 200. And I'm going to say if position X is greater than mm, 200, position Y plus equals 3. Let's go 4. Like so. And I've created a diagonal animation by animating both on the x and y axes. Um, I could stop the x axis animation by saying position x equals 200. So now it stops and does a 90 degree turn. So that should be enough to get you started with HTML5 Canvas.